we go. Here we go. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Double XP with Logan and Danny. We are here with our very special guest of the day, comedian Eric Escobar. What's up, Eric? Hey, I'm so excited to be here to talk about video games. <laughs> it's going to be a great time. Um, I, yeah, let's do it. Hell yeah, dude. So, so, uh, so yeah. So video games. You know, what do huh? you like to play? I like to play RPGs. <laughs> you, you, you fuck with RPGs? Our role playing games. Yes. That's like Pokemon. Sure. Yeah. yeah that's like turn based. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to have more more for me there. I and the limited you're gonna go down the, the, I, uh, I'm playing uh, Bioshock Infinite over again right now for like the eighth time. And we have a gun called an RPG. Yeah. It's like a rocket projection grenade. Yeah. Rock. Is it projection? Not all RPG or games have rocket rocket propelled grenades in them, though. No. Propelled That's is that the is that the correct term? Propelled grenades. But all the RPG weapons have RPG games inside them. Is that true? Maybe. This is a fifty eight more minutes. Fifty eight <laughs> more <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Wait, so Eric, you were saying you're so you're you're currently playing through Bioshock Infinite, right, for like the yeah. hundredth time. Did you actually play through the first ones, or did you just dive right into Infinite? Because I know you can just do that; it's like a standalone kind of thing. Yeah, so um, I have a crazy like gaming history because I had a PS One, I think like a Game Boy Color, or Game Boy Advance, whatever the newer one was, and this is back in like two thousand six, maybe two thousand five, maybe two thousand four. So I had that stuff, and then I stopped playing games, which is like couldn't afford it for years. <laughs> and then like three years ago, so I'm gonna say flash forward like 15 years, I um, got a PS3 and a PS4, but both gifted by me to like great friends. I started playing through games, and there was nothing that I really felt like attached to, or that I like felt that I could like play and be like, oh, this is a good time. Until I played Bioshock One, yeah, uh, Bioshock One, let's Bioshock Two to to infinite and i would say for the past few years i've new games have snuck in but i pretty much am just constantly replaying the bioshock series over and over and over and over again skipping two a lot of the time yeah what was what was wrong with two what didn't you like about two two's cool but i feel like it was just like i don't know i feel like the the story of one was really cool the story of infinite's very interesting two has like a really beautiful story between like this big daddy and this other character but it didn't feel, I don't know, it felt very, like, spin off mm. It didn't feel like a part of the narrative. It felt like, oh, this also happened, and this is fascinating, it's great, but the gameplay was just different. I also hated, I always would run out of fuel on my drill, and that bothered me. <laughs> could never find that was a new fuel. mechanic in, in the second one? Yeah, I didn't yeah, play the, the second one. I played the first one, and I played Infinite uh, a little bit, but I never played the second one. So you you played a, as a Big Daddy in the second one? You are a Big Daddy okay. in the second one. Yeah, you're like yeah. a, a bi- uh, you're like kind of a... A conscious big daddy Whoa. who's like self-aware. Dang. You know how you know how Disney kind of reboots all these kind of movies from like the villains' perspective. You know, like Maleficent and stuff yeah. like that. And that's a, that's a common trope now. Bambi. Bioshock Two kind of felt like this alternative take on the underground Rapture City, and it did feel kind of like an afterthought. I only played maybe a few hours of it, and I felt like like. You know, people who loved Bioshock One, it was good, but I didn't really connect with the story where the first one I did. But Interesting. for you, what was it about specifically Bioshock that, like, for example, you played these games for you know a couple of years, and then even now, it's been a, almost uh, I forget when the original Bioshock came out, but it's been a while since those games <laughs> came out. Sounded like you said Bioshock. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, just imagine the type of game. Well, I do that every day. Yeah, nice Bioshock. <laughs> What happens when you live a keto lifestyle, man? That's a lot of vegetables. You just blast out. It's rapture. Oh, it blasts out. <laughs> it blasts out real hard. I love hot sauce. But this this I game, love truff. this game, like speaking, that was good. Also. <laughs> but this, um, but the game, um, oh, I lost where I was going with that. But the, oh, the repetitive shit. nature that you're go- you're going back to the game, um, why? Like well, there is something about it that just you freaking love. You I think the mechanics just feel safe and yeah. comfortable. You know what I mean? X is jump, square is do stuff the, <laughs> <laughs> the, LR, button, yeah. the lr and r2 i'm just like comfortable yeah. it's a very like i think i've just played it so much and it's so like comfortable and easy to play mm-hmm. that whenever i pick up a new game i'm really excited part of me is like okay now it's like figure out like what works and how i can mm-hmm. make this great 
Bioshock's just comfortable and the aesthetic is so beautiful. It's an old game, yeah. but it looks gorgeous. This mm-hmm. underwater like Art Deco city when you're in the clouds, it looks so just like oh god, the look of the games are beautiful. How much were you into the exploration? Because that I, well, from what I've been seeing um, here and there, especially with m- more games like the, the new Jedi game, um, mm. Fallen Order, is that there's a certain kind of strain of gamers that when they play a world that's drastically different, like Rapture and Bioshock or uh, any Dark Souls game or Red Dead yeah. Redemption, there's there's like an the SmackDown ring in WWE 2K17. Y- you just like <laughs> exactly like w- 2K19. I was just playing and I was like, you know, let's see where you can go out in, in the you know. Uh, Backstage, and yeah, stuff. yeah, that's, that's awesome. Like you go to the trainers room, you go to Triple H's office. You can even there's a um, what are those things called that like they drive and they carry everything? Trucks. Yeah, they have a truck. <laughs> they have a big storage <laughs> truck, and you can actually climb on top of it and like jump off it mm. or like throw someone off it that if whole, you have the yeah. ability. That's but awesome. that whole exploration that was just something that you wanted to see how how far deep everything went. And I find myself in a lot of games that I played that over the years that I've, I go back to. Uh, especially games like Witcher and Skyrim, that man, you can really dig out and go into some deep parts that they've spent a lot of time into. Um, I, to be honest, I've never really felt that from Bioshock, mm-hmm. but it is, it, you know, it's it's when you th- when I think of the world, the Rapture there every time, like the whole sequence in the beginning of the game where you kind of drop down in the elevator, you look around, it yeah. is this boom, <gasps> you go over the never hill. Seen it that sets up before, everything nothing. perfectly. You know? Yeah, it's a great introduction. There's a whole town. story for it. Yeah. Well, to your point, I feel I have like mixed feelings kind of on the exploration factor because i love i love clearing levels let's take bioshock for instance i'm not gonna go through the next doorway until i've looked in every nook and cranny to find every lock pick to find every health kit to find every salt or plasmid i want to get everything mm-hmm. I, I like looting yeah i want to get everything love looting before i go that's why like skyrim we were talking about earlier and like these big sangha games they kind of give me like some anxiety because you can't clear – you can maybe clear a part, but I, like, I'm done with this level. I've done everything I could. Now I want to go to the next level. Mm-hmm. But when it's just, like, choose your own adventure, go wherever you want to go, it's a little yeah. too much for me. I, I Sometimes when they give you the choose your own adventure, sometimes I fuck up and I give myself a shitty story, mm-hmm. you know? And we're like, like, a good example of this <laughs> would be Heavy Rain, I think we've mentioned before. You, you know, the first time I played through, I had an amazing – story um it, it, if you make a the wrong decision you can't go back so it's like it's wow. set in stone and so it's like a six hour game and when i hit this you know I, I i basically beat the game the best ending possible and it was wonderful and then i go back and a friend was watching me and i rebeat it again like one saturday and it was a horrible ending where like the the, the bad guy wins i die tragically and stuff wow. and he's just like yo do we just waste like five hours for that shit and i'm like <laughs> well, well i was like well it, 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 there was a better ending there but there might be some times where I don't have a second playthrough, and I don't have that time. So if I play something, and if I'm given enough slack to hang myself in the game, you know, it might not be a good. So sometimes I think there are times where the game needs to be on rails. There's yeah. um, there's a game that I was looking forward to forever because I think it was only on PC and Xbox, and it just released for PlayStation Four, and I was so stoked. It's called uh, We Happy Few. Yeah. Oh yeah, we, we did. A, we did. A, we tried we to tried. do a playthrough with that. Wait, did you guys take the in the beginning? Did you take the joy, or did you? Well, we at first we yeah. tried to follow it. The game kept crashing, but then we said when we respawned, uh, well, let's try the alternate path. Let's just take the take the, the pill. Joy. How yeah. long? Was, how long was the gameplay after that? Th- two seconds. Two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, credits started the rolling, game. and we're like, "Whoa!" I'm actually gonna clip that into <laughs> a, into a video for the Instagram, where That's it's like great. fastest way to beat the game. It's <laughs> just like instant. technically we did beat the game. Yeah, we but beat it. But it was just a shame it didn't weigh up. <laughs> well, because I've heard, because I was roughly playing through it, and then I got distracted and started playing Infinite again. But I, I heard that like, oh, within the game, you have to balance like um, this medication you're taking, so people think that you're on it and not be on it, so you don't have like memory loss, mm-hmm. like mess up. But it was the same thing. Like I didn't have, I didn't even see joy after that initial part until maybe another three, four hours into playing the game, and I was like, I thought this was like an integral part of the game. Like, why am I not seeing this? Mm-hmm. And then I found out from – it might have been – you might have been the one telling me this. We're like, oh, yeah, I just took the joy and the game was over. Yeah. I'm like, oh, maybe just – yeah, the path I took and mm-hmm. the way I'm getting to it was just like the long way around. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It was, it was fascinating. <laughs> it's also hilarious. In that game, it's, uh, it's crowdfunded, which uh, in my mind is like, that's great, good for you guys, but you probably didn't get the budget that you really, really wanted. So all the characters look alike. 
because oh, they're just yeah. the same stock yeah. character. Very... And if you talk to someone, they're like, man, I can't believe everyone looks like me. Must be because of all that joy we were taking. <laughs> so they just like try to like <laughs> work it, in. Yeah. They're like, oh, that's that's why all the white people and black people are just different tones. That's, that's might funny. be yeah, like. <laughs> oh, what a good bit. So, uh, Logan, how are you? I'm pretty good, man. Great. <laughs> what? Um. So I want to get back to Bioshock, though. Bioshock. So you like the love the first one. Second one's pretty good. Uh, Bioshock Infinite. What was your opinion on that? Because that was a completely different tonal shift in in the game and different brighter and colors. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't as dark. Wasn't as creepy. Um. I, I like prefer the look of the first two a lot. That doesn't mean I don't not like the look of the third one mm -hmm. of Infinite. Um. Apparently. I don't know if they were rushed or not, but I've read that they didn't get the full story that they wanted to actually get in the game. Because mm -hmm. um, the Vox Populi, which is kind of like this resistant, kind of like kind of scarier, like renegade group, mm -hmm. they were supposed to play a bigger role. And all of their scenes are like you know, burning cities, <laughs> and you know yeah. what I mean, like like pirated out places. So it's interesting that they took out some of that darkness and like increased the the lighter, happier stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there is a YouTube video, I think, where they, I think it was the initial reveal where the director comes in and talks about the game. And the, kind of the main plot of the storyline of the original goal for Infinite wasn't as religious, I think, as, as uh, the original yeah. went, went on. Um, it was, f it was mo much more based about how they have this society and then there were these different factions and politics were breaking off and stuff and radicalization and stuff. And that was a whole really interesting angle because of some of the footage that they show, I don't think we're going to be able to put it in and stuff like that. We'll just discuss it, I think, and then move on. Okay. You Use your imagination. Yeah. So, so we'll probably link it maybe in the in the description Zelda. or something like that. <laughs> 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 what? Link. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zelda. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll link so it. we'll put it. We'll put it in the description. But basically, he talks about how. It was definitely more about these different factions and how, you know, you could choose the one faction over the other and how that would change the game and stuff. Well, it's interesting because the Bioshock series, every game has is it, there it's attached to some very big idea. Mm -hmm. Usually uh, kind of like an Anne Rindian like mm -hmm. kind of thing, or something a little more desolate, something very like human based that talks about like human nature, or what like I don't want to say like fate kind of shit or what we're destined to do, but it's interesting with such a big theme, if that theme shifts it changes the whole game. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because we didn't, we got a little bit of politics in this one, but it was mostly about, I don't know, for me, Infinite was very much just about like, everything's always going to go to shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. just the way humans are kind of Murphy's Law built up. Yeah. I, I was really kind of fascinated with kind of the initial, like, the controversy because I remember at the time I was much more religious and I remember when this game came out people were like oh I heard that there My were God, some people yeah. you know like quitting their jobs because it was super controversial and stuff like that and that was probably just the rumor mill trying to increase notoriety well, about yeah the but then you have a game like fucking Doom <laughs> and it's yeah. like oh well, so you're gonna, you're okay with murdering well, that's, 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 all, that's something that's completely different though so so yeah. Doom is just a cartoon portrayal of Satan. And nobody really cares about that because you're not really making an image of something much more sacred and playing with That's it. That's fair. And so, and uh, in terms of there was a lot of Mormonism and this this religious, which I, I thought there was there's a, a huge sort of um, uh, ocean of just different things, such as like like when you look at the the um, creation of our country, you know, in the 1776, and then you look at the religious sort of. Um, a lot of the religious connection with that and then the 1900s mm -hmm. and stuff there was this influx of different denominations and things like that and a lot of the pentecostal movement grew up in the 1900s so there was a lot of influence and you could see that in the game uh right when i started playing in the beginning and some people go oh, this is kind of you know boring and stuff but <laughs> it does speak about much deeper themes about people's life and their existentialism and things like that. everyone in the game is just trying <laughs> to do what's best and what's right mm -hmm. straight up everyone is there there aren't a lot of bad people in the game i would almost dare to say there are no like bad people in the game because everyone is doing what they believe is right all right you mm -hmm. know and then comstock the religious leader he wants to do what's best for his mm -hmm. people the vox populi they're trying to like do what's best for like the resistance mm -hmm. you as booker dewitt you're trying to like 
a cheat. Well, I guess you're a gambling addict, so it doesn't really. Anyways, <laughs> I feel like you're probably the only one that's bad. But yeah, everyone's just trying to do the best they can, and a lot of people. That's just life. Mm-hmm. A lot of people think the best they are doing is the best, but it might not be the best. So and who's someone to tell you like, oh, you're wrong because your faith is wrong or whatever. So what's the whole like? I didn't play the game all the way through. Mm-hmm. So like, what's the whole like love story thing in there? Right. Can we spoil it? Or yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So the game's been out for like what six, yeah. six years, seven. Well, years? some people. Well, like even if you spoil it, I've never finished it. But if you spoiled it for me, I would still like if I ever had time to go back to it, I'd play it fine. Yeah. The, what I would say Stick for both it. of you to do is to play uh, all of the Burial at Sea. Um, Burial at Sea was a DLC. There were two parts to it. It was a DLC they had for Infinite, and basically, you are Booker, the character from Infinite. But you're in an alternate reality where you're in Rapture. Whoa, so it combines. that's awesome. So you're like a detective, but you're a detective at the height of Rapture before like all this, you know, the splicers came out before like it all went to shit. You're at the height of like this beautiful, advanced civilization, but you're kind of following the same storyline. Um, the love story is, oh, God. OK, so. <sighs> Booker had a gambling problem i'm gonna mess this up so hard booker have a had a gambling problem so he sold his daughter to an older gentleman because Whoa. she had powers uh, long story short yeah. very chopped mm-hmm. up yeah, yeah, yeah the older gentleman he sold it to was comstock comstock is Booker in another reality. What? But Booker got born again through the faith, so he renamed himself Comstock. So he stole his daughter from himself. What? Wow. And then the Booker that you're playing as basically is trying to save Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is this girl trapped in a tower. But then you later find out Elizabeth is actually his daughter that he sold to the Comstock in the world that you're now in. That's Bioshock. Yeah. Bioshock's great. I that's just great. got. Yeah. But, but it's, I also so, completely butchered it. Yeah. Like but completely butchered. But it's, no, it's essentially but my kind mind of that. is yeah. blown but, right but now. But Bioshock loves to go there. They don't like to say, "Here's a story, happy couple." They want to say, like, they, they want like to go weird. Like for the first yeah. one, the uh, would you, uh, would you kindly that whole yeah. plot twist when you find out at the very end oh, the guy actually on the nose is the bag. Yeah. You know, that was I <laughs> very remember my my I remember watching. I never beat. The first one over, but I remember seeing my friend beat it because he was the one that had it, and so I just so watched most of the time. Um, and when that happened, I was just like, "That was like video game writing is getting good. Like it's getting, it's mm-hmm. not just getting into just this is a neat story. There's themes, there's deep themes that goes into a lot of these stories. Well, you know how um, Atlas is helping you, then you find out Alice is Frank Fontaine. Mm-hmm. So when you play Burial at Sea, it shows when Atlas, or no, when Fontaine changed his persona to atlas to hire you and create you Mm. for bioshock one whoa but you're playing i think you're playing that part as elizabeth in the world of rapture trying to get booker to wit to help you there's like 18 storylines that just overlap and connect beautifully it's great wow. so speaking of all the positives about the story and the, and the, and things about bioshock You're talking a lot about bioshock i love yeah, this i this do great. i i it's it's, it's really making game. me want to go yeah. back and do it because now Seriously. now that i have a nicer computer since when i played it originally i probably can max it out and it'll be yeah. you know and the game holds up very well graphically oh but, my god um, it's beautiful was there ever anything with bioshock that you were turned off by like for example i find myself like we, when sometimes I think we mentioned it earlier in this podcast when we're, we're playing a game like Witch or something. You just press X, skip, 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 skip. You just skip all the dialogue. I think for those dialogues, I'm compatible with. But with Bioshock, they would do a lot of tapes. And just here's a 30-second clip of yeah. some guy going, oh, when I was a boy. And they just tell him this <laughs> story. And yeah. I'm just like, okay, I don't want to listen to this shit. I want to go kill somebody. And I think sometimes that would take away – I mean, even though that was my own doing, yeah. it's my fault – I just didn't like that method of storytelling where I would almost rather something more direct. But because it's an empty room, you have to get you have nothing but tapes. That's kind of the only way that they can deliver the story. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the the thing with the audio logs and the Vox phones and all those things, I think it's an interesting tool just because I think everything all the core concepts of a story that you need and that you want, they're given to you. Mm-hmm. You're fine. But these are just like little they're, they're just seasonings. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, let's just say you go 
and uh, you're you're in rapture and uh, or okay, here's one like in. Bioshock Infinite, there's this place where they're basically like testing Elizabeth's powers, and it's top secret, and it's super crazy, and you find a voxophone, and basically it's uh, it's like a really racist town. It's just a butler, or not a butler, a janitor who's black, who's like, because I'm black, they don't, they don't think I'm hearing anything, or they don't even think of me as like a human, so they're telling me all these secrets, and it looks like they're in some big trouble. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I don't need that in order to like further the story or progress the story, but it's like, oh, that's interesting. It almost mm-hmm. makes it's kind of like wrestling where like heels will do evil things just to make you hate them more. A lot yeah. of those voxophones are just making you fall in love with characters more mm-hmm. or hate people more. You know that's, what I mean? That's a really good. That's probably the best defense of the nice, audio. It's a nice, a nice spice. No, yeah, I agree. Yeah. 100%. And you also get random like. Oh man, we were locking up the shed last night, and I left four hundred dollars in the shed, <laughs> and the key was given to Joe, who left it in the library. Yeah. I better bet that key from Joe in the library in order to get the four hundred dollars in the safe with that key. And you're like, oh great, now I can loot four hundred dollars yeah, in the safe. Yeah, now I know where to get okay, this yeah, money. Yeah. Yeah. That that that's, that happens all the time in The Witcher. But for, because like the Witcher, you, you press X and then it'll show up a little note and it'll just be a text on the yeah. note. It's almost sim- more similar to like Morrowind where you can just – like I can read a big paragraph of text and then you – know, Boom, these are the beats I know, going okay, to you. Boom, go, boom, I go to this place yeah. where I don't have to talk about a guy moaning about his ex-wife or something like that. Oh, she – you know, yeah. there are the uh, – and this is sometimes the voice actors really – Go into it. Okay, got one line. You got to say one nice thing about a story, and they really and they just lay it on the line. And you're just like, dude, I just want to kill somebody. I don't need to listen (laughs) to this, you know, Academy Award winning performance. (laughs) But um, you know, just my my dog died. You know, it's my dog. That was the greatest dog I've ever had in my life. It's like, okay, dude. Like (laughs) in uh, Bioshock One, there's uh, so the way you get these plasmids, especially like basically like kind of like sharing like blood from different people Mm -hmm. in a way. So sometimes you see ghosts, but you're really just seeing the memories of the person whose blood you may have gotten. Mm. And you see like these two ghosts fighting, and um, it's in like the back of a strip club, and it's like this guy like murders this girl, and then you enter this room, and there's like this dead corpse of this woman there. And it's really cool, but then if you listen to her audio log, you find out the guy who killed her was Andrew Ryan, who's, like, the top guy in the game. If you don't know that, whatever. But if you do know it, now you're like, oh, Oh, I can't wait to fuck you up with some fire (laughs) and crows. Crows aren't in Bioshock 1. Someone's got to teach them how to get rid of bodies, right? (laughs) I think that I read a rumor online that the Bioshock series is going to be getting to come out for switch oh my god if that happened i would <laughs> yeah. i would that so do i'm you, dead. do you have a switch or do you know for anyone that has a switch or like what's no your i got a uh i have the the iphone 5 and i have the tetris on it mm. that's all i got it's pretty much the same thing <laughs> but the, the, you got the an switch. application you go to the app store say in tetris and there's like four and you get the free one the yeah and it just says get and you push it yeah yeah and then you, then you, when you go to buy like new stuff, like little like coins on it, cost. Oh, yeah, well, no, I have to delete it because I take too many pictures. Oh. So I need more storage. But then I delete pictures. It's an endless cycle. But no, I never had a switch. The only the last ga- handheld thing I've had was literally like a Game Boy Advance. Before that, a Game Boy Color, and then before that, my dad's old Palm Pilot. Like those mm-hmm. are the only handheld things you handheld things I've ever. What was uh? What what would you play on Game Boy Color? Uh, wait, was this the one with the backlight, or was it just no. color where you had to plug the the snake? into like the side of the game board. I had like a light. like yeah. a magnifying glass. It was like you had a one of those. Ooh, ooh. You fancy. Dude, those yeah. are like ground effects for like a Camaro in the 90s when you but see guys walking around with those. Things. This is kind of what I hated about my parents. And this is like the worst thing. I love my parents so much. I appreciate them. But when I was younger, they would buy me things that were like kind of expensive that I would want, but that I didn't need. And I'd be like, why didn't we just save this money? I could have like spent it on a game or if we just like they would buy me like the giant Game Boy Color magnifier light, but I'd be like, Oh, could I get a game? And they're like, No, we just bought you this thing for forty dollars. I'm like, Well, I don't care about the light. I would have rather had a game and squint it. <laughs> they would do that all the time. When I was a child, my entire way of thinking in terms of economy was in units of games. So yeah. like when my parents would like buy something if I would see like um, like I remember getting a book one time and it was like fourteen dollars and I was like, oh shit, I could have gotten a used game. Exactly. Game stop. You know Keith <laughs> Kelly? Yeah. Yeah. You know that joke he has? He's like, I kind of look at all of my 
buying decisions in tacos. <laughs> oh, twenty dollars for the gas. <laughs> That could have been, like, 20 tacos. It's kind of the same. Well, because also my parents, they would, like, I feel like they didn't realize games were games. Yeah. So, like, I never, for some reason, like, they wouldn't let me, like, go out and be like, oh, I saved my money. Can I buy that game? They'd be like, oh, well, good A on your report card. We'll buy you a game. And mm-hmm. be like, a shitty game. Like, they just pick one? You're yeah, done they just, like, pick a cheap they one. They asked this, the, the guy that works at the store, what's a good one? I think they would do that. Yeah. And, I'm like, and he would be like, oh, well, we haven't been selling any of these, so what? they'll buy it for 20 bucks. Or he'd be like, well, there's GTA. And then, like, oh, no, we don't want him to play anything violent. Okay, well, here's, you know, a racing game. Yeah. I, 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 has that ever I, happened F-Zero to you? Was I'm, I'm pretty sure that's happened to me a couple times. Happened a few times. You know, well, I, I think I remember trying to, like, plead and explain that, like, bloody action. It, it, it doesn't mean that there is a lot of blood. It means that there may be some blood in the action. Yeah. But it's not always bloody action, Mom. You know, and I'm trying to... You know, drug use. You know, the bad guys. They're doing the drugs, Mom. Uh, the good, the good character. The good even guys are killing them. Yeah, the good guys are killing brutally. the guys with the drugs. Yeah, but it's the good. <laughs> the and I'm the hooker <laughs> the that yeah. they end up having sex with. It's great. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Just, just war theory to... in video games <laughs> just goes to shit. Yeah. and it's just like eh, we got all these guns, might as well use it. But when know? we were younger, there was such a stigma around violence in games, with like because of Tekken mm-hmm. and because of like. Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat like, really made everyone, yeah. every adult was like, video games are ruining children. And we're like, yes, but... No one's w- getting their spine ripped out yeah, they're from like, 50 yeah. yards away. What do you mean you, know? you uppercutted him and now there's 20 skulls on the ground? This doesn't even make sense. <laughs> but you know sense. there's one random asshole kid yeah. in fucking, like, Georgia, and he actually, like, took out someone's spine, and now no one can, like, you know what I mean? Like, everyone always messes it up for everyone yeah. else. Yeah, well, it's usually Florida, right? Yeah, it's probably so Florida, yeah. <laughs> Just get collected skulls. Oh, we, this is the one thing that we can point to. No, <laughs> God damn it, Jeffrey. Yeah. It's like when, when Jackass made it big and we were all just fucking throwing our friends around in shopping carts and yeah. shit. Yeah. Oh, man. I did that. Or like drunk fun. drivers. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Anyways, so uh, <laughs> it's a Jim Jeffries bit. It's a Jim Jeffries bit. Um, it's okay. He did it. No, it's not okay. I but like but what game? What game did you have for Game Boy Color? I don't think we. Uh, Pokemon Red and Blue. Okay. Uh, both. Yellow. You really had both. Yeah, I had both. Wow. Um, they were the same game though. Yeah, you just got like six different Pokemon. I think you I know got what? I actually think I I remember I had Pokemon Yellow. That was the first one I got, and my really? friends had Red and Blue, and I was just like, oh, I gotta get Blue. And when I got Blue, and I realized. It was just a black and white version of yellow that didn't have like one or two of the newer Pokemon. And it didn't have Pikachu. And Pikachu I, yeah. After like yeah. twenty hours I in, I was like, I "Yeah, this is the same fucking game." <laughs> no, <it's the> worst. <laughs> you know, and that was that was when I was like, "Okay, I think I'm done with Pokemon." And then Pokemon like Emerald came, or the next one, or after no, Silver and Gold. Silver and Gold mm-hmm. came out, and I I got Gold That's and I, I loved off. it, and then I got Silver again. And I was like, "It's the same fucking game." You didn't learn your lesson. I didn't. L- no, I well, my mom the at worst. the time was getting, but I, I was like still appreciative because it's like. How do you feel about that when you get a new game and it's like, oh, you know, but you already played a game, but you know deep down this is a game that's simply the same. You know, like internal issues of a game. You're like, this is the same game. But I uh, hope my mom's not watching this. I also remember, <laughs> I think I ha- I got like red for Christmas with a Game Boy Color. And then my parents gave me blue, but I knew from my other friends that like, oh, this is the same game. So I pretended to be like really excited and like really happy about it. To make my parents feel good, because they wanted, yeah. like, a fucking game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I remember my mom... I think I was, it was, like, in front of my mom, and then, like, my dad came home, and my mom was like, oh, you really like the game, like, you're so happy, blah, blah, blah. So they went out, and I think they got yellow, and it was big. But I, like, didn't want yellow, because I played it on my friend's stuff, and I'm yeah. like, this is... How do you beat Brock? This is dumb. So I remember, <laughs> I, like, I would pretend to be happy, and my parents would, like, get reinforced, like, we should buy more Pokemon stuff, and I was really, like, I'm not that big of a Pokemon fan. <laughs> so this is kind of just so stop doing this. Stop. But I appreciate it. But I appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. I want you to be please be nice. Well, my favorite one was the silver because I never played gold or silver. Silver was cool because you could so you had the whole like uh whatever like Johto League or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. I forget what it was called. Uh, you had a whole new area and then once you beat that area in the Poke League there you can get on a boat and go to an island, and it would take you to like the red and blue area uh, afterwards. So it was like two games in one. one yeah, it was yeah. fucking awesome. Oh shoot, yeah, I completely Pokemon forget. Pokemon yeah. had a, a pinball game too that was very good. Oh yeah, Pokemon pinball. Pokemon pinball was yeah. excellent. That was another one where I was like, wow, I didn't think this would be good. Did you guys ever have the Game Boy camera? 
It looks like a boob. <laughs> like a circle. I've seen it, but I did. I, didn't I, have one I, I, I still my rich have friends one had it. And it was that was like whoa, a printer. Take, cool. you take selfies. I didn't have that. That was the BS thing. I didn't have a printer, so I had the camera, but I couldn't print stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> it was really that at a weird game job. That's probably why I didn't play for fifteen years. I was like, these are all dumb. Did you know, now, that, now that you guys are mentioning like yellow and stuff, I'm I'm realizing how often w- w- when you were a child, like I was going back in the old. Um, like like family videos of Christmas and stuff. And I I look back and I go, man, I was the biggest fucking liar, because <laughs> there were so many times like like my parents would get me something or my grandma and I'd be like, oh my god, and you'd these really like, awesome socks. You I've to always happy, yeah. I'm like I was like, yeah, damn, I was like, I remember <laughs> I was probably like five or six years old and my logic was like Santa Claus has a ton of shit in his bag. He has everything in his bag, so whatever I ask for, he can like get me. So I kept on like changing my dear Santa letter, yeah. like every like day and a half. And my parents <laughs> were like, "Eric, you have to like, Stop. you have to pick something for Santa." He's like, "He's not even gonna see it till he comes down. He'll have it. Like we'll be fine." <laughs> and I remember my parents being like, "You can't. No, you don't understand." I remember one year I was like, I really I felt like Santa ate too many cookies. So I was like, oh, let's make him zucchini bread. I would love because he's healthier. <laughs> let's make Santa some zucchini bread. My mom was like, we don't have to do that. I'm like, no, I really want to do it. And I remember she was like, no, we're not going to make zucchini bread because, you know. And um, <laughs> so we didn't do it. And I was needed like, an so, out. I was so upset because I was le- I legitimately thought, like, oh, this is fucked up. He's, like, giving me gifts every year, and I can't even make him, like, something nicer. Yeah. I'm just, like, some bullshit cookies. <laughs> It was very upsetting. And your mom's just like, you know what? I think Santa would actually really like a bottle of rosé. Yeah. We can, actually, <laughs> we can leave that I'll for him. I'll pick one out for him. Yeah, He'll drink it all in one a night. A nice charcuterie board <laughs> yeah. here for him. <laughs> but um, the, I, I, I want to circle back to when – so when I mentioned the Switch. Mm-hmm. The Switch, I've, I've never really been interested in – I used to be a Nintendo guy as a kid. But the, the Switch is something that's – Every year is becoming this bigger and bigger sort of draw because there's more games, more and more. That's that's the I was never I was never even remotely considering mm-hmm. ever getting a Same. Switch because one I'm poor as fuck. Mm-hmm. Two, <laughs> if I got it, what brawl? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. literally it. Well, another thing that I you know for the past few years, when uh, not Windows, I almost called them Windows. Uh, Nintendo has always been like like f- the console wars. People really say, "Oh, you know, what's this? How many teraflops and how many? What's the speed of this console?" Teraflops. Like oh yeah, we went into yeah, that last episode. I, sh- I don't even want to mention that again. Uh, yeah. But but you know, we really look at the different consoles and really see what's faster and stuff. But when you look at Nintendo, the Nintendo Wii, Nintendo Wii U, even the GameCube at the time, which was competing with the PS2 and stuff, yeah, they've always always taken a back seat, and that's always made me like, hey man, like like the Switch is 720p when you're playing. Um, and I think sometimes when you're playing, um, oh, and when you're playing a handheld, sometimes it'll even load down to like 540p, which is like oh, lower wow. than like it's like The Witcher is a game that it's basically when you play it on PC on low, that's what you're playing. The and more it's even, P, the even better. If it's even below <laughs> low, basically. So, but 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 even though like I've you know looked at it and I've kind of scoffed because of the game um, selection and also. Even though it's not the fastest thing, that doesn't necessarily mean that to have a successful console, it needs to be the fastest thing. Because right now, its architecture and its speed means that it's almost the perfect game for a lot of these new remasters for the last 10 years Where that I are coming you. out. They're, I mean, the fact that The Witcher from 2015 can run on the Switch, just modified, which, you know, everything's turned down a lot. A lot more games. If the entire Bioshock collection comes out, if more if Resident Evil games oh and stuff like that God. come out, I'm like, to be honest, it's the the Switch was never marketed to compete with the PlayStation for the PlayStation. It was 5. yeah, it's it was supposed to be its thing, own yeah. thing, and and Nintendo never when they kind of decided to stop competing directly, and they just said, you know, we're gonna make our own thing. I to be honest, I might see myself with the Switch sooner or later. I've, well, you know, go. I feel like the thing with that is the the. the, the Nintendo's selling point has always been the Nintendo games, the Mario franchise, mm-hmm. uh, stuff that you will never see on a Sony console or Microsoft console at all. So when you have the Switch What's now, Microsoft? Is that the Xbox, the Xbox stuff? yeah. Oh, cool. So like when you see that they are getting everybody else's games on their console. So not only because before they were like, oh well, you couldn't get like the Call of Duties or like anything like that uh, or 
think mm-hmm. about Witcher being on like the Wii or something mm-hmm. like that in mm-hmm. the past. But now that they're allowing all those games to be on their platform, it's like now you got the best of both worlds. Like you got all the Nintendo games and all these action games that you can play now too, all in one. Plus, you can take it anywhere you want. I think that's that, the biggest selling point. Right? Because for me, I feel like there have been times, or actually, when <laughs> the Brian Regan weekend, when we all went to Pachanga, yeah, like I brought my PlayStation with me that weekend. Oh yeah, and you played the Spider Man. Yeah, because I was obsessed with the game. And I wanted, to, but like, I had to bring a whole PlayStation Four to this hotel. It's half your suitcase. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> with a Switch, it's so like boop right boop there. boop. You know, and it's not even that big. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like big enough from what I've seen, but not like insane like a lot of other people like. Like yeah. the fact that when you put it into the docking station, it actually runs at higher settings because it's it does it's not running off battery. It can overclock a little bit, which yeah. is really really cool. But one of the things about Nintendo games, um, like going back when I was a Game Boy, uh, 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 GameCube. You're owner, a game man. Yeah, I, I <laughs> <laughs> when game I, when man. I was a, I, w- I had a GameCube, but I remember at the time. GameCube had like Resident Evil, Resident Evil Zero, and then it had like never Metal, played a GameCube. Metal Gear Solid. But never, yeah. but yeah. these were but very I've heard rare great games. Things. So, yeah. so what? Th- at the time, I remember lamenting because I was like, you know, PlayStation and Xbox have these, I think, cooler games, and that's mm-hmm. what drew me to those consoles. And I find out that I think a lot of it actually is culturally. Um, Nishinjiri Miyamoto used to be the, I think, the head of Nintendo before Riggi, uh or Reggie Diamas. Watts? Um, no. Reggie Watts. <laughs> Reggie Watts. Well, he was eventually replaced by the president. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's yeah. another president, I think, now who's replaced him. But uh-huh. um, at the time when the GameCube was coming out, I believe um, when they would come out with a Donkey Kong game on N64, Donkey Kong was given an ability where he had a cannon where he could shoot coconuts at people like a gun. And apparently, from what I've read, that Shinjiri found it horrifying that that sort of violence was – you know those that type of violence was going to be exhibited by a Nintendo character, and I was like, "Oh, when you think about it, to that culture, that is so shocking and t- different." Where to us, we're like, it's almost normalized. Where it's like, "Oh, yeah, he needs a cannon or something like that." I They're forgot like, what year. Yeah, is he going to bleed? Are they going to bleed? Do these <laughs> these go- Our heads are going to fly off, right? But no, but it's it's different. You go from it's that. someone in the head with a coconut. His spine yeah. flies out. Yeah. Fatality. <laughs> <laughs> different <laughs> strokes for different folks. Diddy Kong's like throwing his hat around. Yeah. <laughs> like, but uh, I think it yeah. was like 2017, 2016. I read an article and I was like, this is bull. Like, there's no way that this is a real statistic. But I was like, well, maybe there was a year recently where of every game that was produced and put out on the market on a mainstream level, 100% of them had violence. Like, not one game did not have violence. And I was like, well, what about your puzzle games? Wait, you've been this year? It was, it was like, within the past like three or four years. Wow. Mm-hmm. I remember hearing that. I don't think it was this year. Even the game Flower? Remember on PlayStation? No. Nope. It might have been not that year. Okay. But I was like, how do you have 100%? That d- doesn't make sense. Yeah. But I was thinking about it, like, you know what? Maybe there's like no puzzle games this year, no Flower games. Yeah. Or like Tetris is like, someone's like shooting the Tetris thing down. You know, the yeah, like how, what's the definition you of know. it? How do you justify um, it? But when you think about it, like like a game is is... is you always have to have an action to respond to something. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, you have to create a situation where there's threats. And, I mean, there's not really a game. Like, can you can you imagine, like, a pacifist kind of shooting game, you know? Well, like, the g- whole... Crap, crap, the mattress! Or, you know, actually, that actually would be really fun. Do a... What was the movie that Mel Gibson came out with? Heart, uh, Passion Hacks- of the Hacksaw Christ. Hacksaw Ridge? Hacksaw Ridge? Passion of the... <laughs> it's Passion of the Christ. <laughs> Essentially. But uh, what was his name? Uh, <laughs> not Norman Bates. Um... The guy that Gene won the, the, you know, the guy that won the uh, the Medal of Honor Anthony for being the first conscious subjector. Anthony Perkins. Yeah, we don't know. Anthony this. Perkins, the guy that's on the, w- the workout machine. This is No, Anthony um, Perkins was uh, Norman Bates. No, Anthony Perkins, isn't that a guy that also does the Pompeii like gr- uh, rotisserie chickens? That's <laughs> uh, that's George Ty- George Tyson. Uh, George, George, uh, Foreman. Oh, no, it's George Foreman. Foreman. George, George Foreman. Foreman yeah. grill. Tyson um, chickens. F- oh, f- f- Ooh, side note like on Tyson that. One time, I remember like 2011, right when I got Twitter, right when it came out, I remember I was like, I'm going to tweet a celebrity, see what happened. And I remember George I tweeted Foreman. at George Foreman saying, George, I'm sorry. I've neglected my grill. I've been grilling regular hamburgers just as a joke. And he tweeted back to me. He says, I don't accept that. 
go back and use your George Foreman grill. No joke. He tweeted back to me and told me, wow. you know, he says, this is y- y- your, your health deserves it. And I was like, holy shit. Like, he believes in that promise. That was when I learned never to tweet a celebrity again because they <laughs> literally might straight up just like point their finger in your fucking chest. George Foreman wow. How many retweets? You. <laughs> so nobody. I, I think after I was done, I think I deleted my account because I was like, I can't. You're just too shell shocked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I mean, we have by George it. Foreman. Does anyone want some ribs? <laughs> Logan's just like, <laughs> 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 just complete trigger. You didn't want to hide behind the uh, a nice photo of a sunset like everyone else on the internet. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe I don't know. I mean. I kind of forget where I was going with that originally, but George Foreman. No, the yeah. uh, not Trasifus. Drew and Dross. I forget what his name is, but okay. Uh, um, Metal, uh, Mel Gibson came out with the war movie about a guy who was a pacifist who didn't believe in harming other people, and he was a medic, and it was a terrific movie. But imagine a video game where, like, like you know, in the beginning of a game where you're running around, like, give me a fucking gun, give me a fucking gun. You know, like imagine the whole like a six-hour campaign where you're just running around with your hands just <laughs> in front of the fucking That's screen. Yeah. Just gun. Where, are you gonna pick up something? No, it's no, not the point of this yeah. game. You like this game, I did, so at it's, one a point, point, it's a walking yeah. simulator. You know, yeah. 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 You like pet a dog. You know, <laughs> you just keep running. <laughs> Use your white flag. Use your white flag. <laughs> Yeah. Sway faster, sway faster. You accidentally hit someone in the head. No, you lose. Game Just over. Like, yeah. I don't know. Just shoots you in the head. I don't know if that <laughs> game. I don't know if that game would sell. Well, so. depends on the marketing it kind uh, of behind it. Right. Well, also, I was going to say that. Actually, I would buy that and be like, I give it to my friends like, yo, this game is fucking awesome. Try it out. And they're like, dude, that game fucking sucked, dude. It just I got would, killed all the time. I would buy like every copy in the bargain bin, all the ones going for like two bucks, and then just give it out when you're for like Christmas gifts. Just be like, guy, this great new game. Never heard of it, but it's wonderful. Ah! Moisturize. I don't own a Nintendo. Ah! Lotion. Sponsored by Jergens. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Jergens. Yeah. So, um, yes. are there any games this year that you're like stoked on? That's that you, you're eyeing up. That you're like, okay, this is coming down the pipe, and you got to get ready for it. And let's let's do a little game. Let's do. Uh, why don't you say a new game, and I'll give like a a hell yes, a yeah, a maybe, a no, or a fuck no. Okay. And then you're going to give a game, and then we'll just go back and forth for a minute, and I'll give you my opinions so, on all the new stuff. So Rapid fire. We'll make it great. <laughs> okay. Uh, have we done this? Have, first, we done, have we had any game segments yet? No, 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 no. Yeah. Cu- double X? No, yeah. Um, first. This, so, this so actually, this is first. in related news. This is actually a couple days ago. Uh, so Cyberpunk 2077 was hell yes. was supposed to come out in April. They just delayed it to September. Hell no. Well- <laughs> this actually brings up an interesting question. When a game gets delayed, like Nintendo Maybe. has been very comfortable <laughs> delaying games. Just like, hey, you know, we'll finish when it's when it's done. They don't have to stick to these timelines. So a lot of complaints, people think that some game developers are crunching too hard. They have to try to meet these timelines. And because of that, games are buggy. They're shipped. They're not complete. WWE 2K2020. Yeah. Horrible. horrible. Every glitch. Downgrade. and ev- I just bought 19 because I had to compare horrible. both of them. It is such a downgrade. You the know? T- 2020 is so many glitches. I, so bad. And when you make the they same game. Because they rushed it. And when you make the same game every year, how does that game get so different and it's such a step back? Like, I saw a video where the they were comparing. The micro mode is the only thing really changing. Yeah, I saw, like, even subtle differences where you go backstage, there are less NPCs, just less flashy things. And I'm like, but it, it, what? I'm trying to understand from a code reason why is this happening but anyway getting back to the, the whole point about delays some people think oh a delay that's good news it's because the game is going to be better it's going to be it's they're going to have six more months to work on the game it's going to be so much better or they've just fucked it up too hard but yeah well here's another thing is that um and this is very common in game development is that a lot of people because when that delay happens from now until September, people are going to be working their asses off, hundred hour weeks, just crunch time, crunch time, crunch time. And so, as much as we love games, we you know also have to look at the human you know el- effort that goes into it and see just the amount of effort that a lot of these people put into it and stuff. And it's like, ooh man, I mean, we want to make sure that these people are being you know treated you know appropriately. And a lot of times in QA, well, and same stuff. with like the blood diamond children. Yeah. You true. Know what I mean? Jesus. <laughs> yeah, once you mention that, once you mention that, you're like, ah, eh, fuck We're these making guys. Six figures They're here, fine. Hey. They're fine. <laughs> I also give a hell yes the Blood Diamond Children game. I really want to play that one. <laughs> That's uh, that RPG. 
took my point. Just he just saw it in half. No, his hands are constantly <laughs> in the air. <laughs> oh, I'm a pacifist. <laughs> 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 da, 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 da. Blood Diamond game coming soon. Oh, oh man, Dang. so throw out a game, yeah. dude. I don't. I honestly haven't been paying attention to what's coming out this year. I mean, this game I guess, sucks. I guess. Uh, the The Last of Us Two, right? Isn't that? Coming? I don't like The Last of Us. Whoa, Whoa that's a first. Take, okay, hot, I don't like take, it. we're hot, turning. Take, hot, take. We're exiting I'm not a gamer. here. Bum, 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 bum. Um, no, wait. How long did you play? It's a okay. It's a slow burner. Right up until the girl died. I feel. Oh, uh, no, just kidding. I'm kidding. Because I want to issue homework because it's like once you get like two hours <laughs> into it, you really get a sense of it. There are some hairy moments where there's a bunch of shit happening. This is why I don't like it, and it's it's very much a personal reason. One reason why I like Bioshock, one reason why I like Doom, is the amount of uh, replay and the amount of creative decision making you can make. That impacts Do you just want to like go in with a machine gun and have fun? Boom. Do you want to switch in between like your magic and your plasmids and guns? Great. Do you want to just like be a douche and get your RPG or your giant cannon mm-hmm. and just use that? Do you want to be a sniper? I yes. find that fascinating to like mm-hmm. bounce around between different ways of attacking. Yes. Last of Us, it's so formulaic. You're throwing cans. You ha- but you have to throw the right cans. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? there are some levels where you can go in guns blazing, and then there's some levels where it'd be better to d- like. They try to instead of giving you the option, they try to give you like a a, 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 um, a prefix menu mm. of those elements. But you it's, know? it's not a prefix as much as you kind of are like. You're locked in to fighting the way that they want you to fight, and it was a huge turnoff. Yeah, and that's fine. But that's I feel fine. I feel like that's the balance, right? That's what we were kind of talking about earlier, where it's like more being told what to do or made go in a direction may be the resolution for like having a better story and a more consistent story. I will right? say I agree. the 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 buy off or the the trade off is there. Yeah, and I really appreciate. But here's the thing: I would rather be told a good story. Ideally, my perfect game is give me a great story, but still let me do it how I want to do it, guns a blazing every time. Which would be Bioshock. Which is bi- that's yeah. why I love that game. But that's why like Bioshock is kind of on rails for the you know it is like on rails at to to a certain degree. More like on rails, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, like so so I think the the variation that Bioshock gives is that. The map and the levels are on rails. You go from this level to this level, this level. But within those levels, you have the variation to hack or to do this. You kind of have yes. some options. And then that also then added with combination of there may be one or two areas where you don't have to do in sequence. You could do them in different times and stuff. Oh, yeah. You can kind of like jump around. Something stuff. like that. Just Last of Us was – I understood. There's no side so quests. Fun. It's one story. Yeah, but yeah. It, it was very just like and, – And you don't really have the option to choose often. Or anything, you don't, yeah. You know, um, I think the main st- like there was actually a point in I was maybe my only beef with The Last of Us is that maybe like when it got to the climax of the game, your character does something, and I remember sitting at the game just staring at going, "Wait, I'm not going to do that." And that was when I was like, I didn't yeah. connect and identify with my character, and that was. But then I realized, uh, okay, so I'm playing with this character now. It pulled me out of the game, but I, I continued on, and it was still an amazing ending, and I think it's one of the best like. I, I'm hyped for didn't, I'm glad that Danny mentioned them because I think it is a great story to experience. It's like 10 hours. It's like one big Netflix season. Just it's it's equivalent to that. And Eric doesn't like it. Well, within <laughs> to be fair, within I would say about two hours of game, I'll give myself like a very cross faded night. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If I buy a new game, I'm giving you like a, a, a night of a couple bowls, a couple beers and I'm just going to play it for whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Usually more than two hours, sometimes from 10 p.m. till 5 a.m. Hell yeah. If that night doesn't fully engulf me and I become mm-hmm. obsessed, I start Bioshock over again. Or <laughs> no, it's infinite time. There are yeah, a lot of other time. games yeah. that are kind of like The Witcher. Witcher, I think, is probably one of the best RPGs I've ever played. It took me maybe three or four hours to really kind of get into it. So I played it and stopped for a couple of months, played it and stopped. And then now I'm getting into it where I'm really, I'm like level 10 now and I'm 40 hours in. This and is I'm the like, one where you're washing the lady, right? I think you can do that in this one, but it's, it's, it's <sighs> very, the it. action is very Zelda like and you have like 10 different Link. magic spells and stuff. Link. It's really, really <laughs> cool. But it's, it, it has that sort of fun action where you can fight 10 different guys at the same time. That's hard. Uh, it's challenging. 
but yet it also has the RPGMs where if you want to craft a sword from scratch, you get all the elements, and then you can make it magic and wow. stuff like that. But have you ever played um, um, Red Dead Redemption 2? Uh, just one. I like it, but I have the same problem with it as I do with like a Skyrim. See, Red it's Dead Redemption much. 2, I would say, would be my example of where I think is the perfect hybrid between on rails and you have choices that impact your story because what they do is they they it's they're so subtle and i think i mean they've spent five years on working onto a game they're gonna make it very subtle where most of the interaction that your character does is automatic as you're walking around someone's talking to him and he's walking so you don't really have a cutscene, so you're in control most of the time um but what i think is 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 really cool is that um, depending on how you do certain things, that there are cutscenes where s- people's lines will just change slightly based on something you did or not. Mm. Like, like at the very end of the game, you play, play a pr- you I play love that stuff. You play a prologue and stuff, and as people are conversing about certain things and certain choices, you know, they'll be saying, "Oh, this guy, you know, he was a good man, or this guy, he was a bad, th- he was a bad guy." But we all were kind of. It just changes subtly, but it really kind of makes and it's graceful where you don't really bounce up against the barriers of, of like you don't really feel the programming of it you feels just That's elegant cool. and i would really say yeah i mean some of these games now because they're huge long 50 hour kind of experiences they sometimes they take five hours to kind of really warm up and get into i hate but that you know, that's <laughs> my pitch of that no really th- these I like w- red dead's always been on here's the thing i always feel really weird about playing sequels before prequels you think Red Dead's okay? Red Dead actually is a prequel to the first one. It leads right up into oh, the first really? one. Oh, really? So, yeah. So, actually, I should probably play Like, I never too. played the first <laughs> one. I played the second <laughs> one, and I it leads right up exa- right up to the very end. So, there's one thing in Infinite where, um, like I said, like, this this town is super racist, or this area is super racist, and there's one point where uh, you get, like, a baseball, and they, like, tie up an interracial couple, and you have to throw the baseball at the interracial couple. But you get a choice. You can either throw it at them or throw it at the guy who's, like, telling you to do it. And then you – basically, whatever you choose, the end result's the same. They realize that you're, like, an imposter and they, like, tackle you. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make that big of a difference. But if you throw it at the guy five hours into the game, the couple meets you and they're like, here's a gift. Thank you. And we remember Mm -hmm. you. And I've played this game at least half a dozen times. Never had the heart to – throw it at the couple <laughs> but i really want to like go on youtube and be like "Ooh, what happens when you do throw it at the couple what do <laughs> yeah. they do later because it's you feel bad even with the <laughs> yeah. little sisters in the first one like i harvested one once to be like oh, what's gonna happen shoot. and it's felt like shit and then yeah the next 80 times the little sister I'm like not nah, you're fine so. <laughs> i want to i want to design a video game that's very like decision making vibes like that but uh, every time you make a decision, you can, like, see what happens if you chose the other decision. But mm. that wouldn't sell well. Hey, guys, how are you? <laughs> I, I, I have a game des- idea. Zelda. No, here, you know what? Link. Damn it. That was my idea. No, what is it? Uh, no, so uh, my idea is that, so, like, the games are always supposed to be enjoyable, right? I, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> you might, sometimes you might want a game that's just fucking horrible, just as a, you know, as a, as a joke gift to somebody. Oh, here, here's the, that's the, the uh, pacifist that's the thing. excuse. So I did it as a joke. Yeah. See, <laughs> 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 so well, if, if you ever play a game, you're like, this sucks. It's a game like, where you murder you know all what? these puppies. It's a good bit. Yeah, somebody <laughs> probably had a good experience with this game because oh, if it was like it was a gag gift or something there are some yeah. games that are bad enough to where you're like jesus who could i just subject this to you know the bugs i mean you've ever had game breaking bugs that break yeah, your save games sucks. and it's all this anyway i would love to design a game where you're in an apartment and you have to find your keys <laughs> but the point is i'm gonna program the keys aren't even in the apartment you're just constantly looking You're for keys asshole. that aren't there and just say hey dad we'll try this game out and they can't get past the first level there's only one level in this game but and it's gonna be fun it's gonna be incredible because you could actually <laughs> look through everything in it you could like go through like pockets no. yeah. you oh. could, like, and you yeah. find yeah. out like, stuff about this person drawer. this dumbass that lost yeah. his keys random <laughs> blood stains places what you should do is you should have like a safe where the code is like on the computer but to find out the password to the computer, you need to like go into your mail, and when you get your mail, you have to like the it's like, like a very yeah. actually string a crazy yeah. story, like a very yeah. escape room kind of thing. Yeah. And then right when they're about to get it, it's just like a video of you being like, 
fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> no, or <laughs> no, and let's do it. So when I could totally program well, you this can do it. Where, I'm not gonna be to where when someone's playing, it will like record a video so I can watch them get frustrated slowly as they play this game. And then, like and then you find out Steam. the keys were dead the whole time. Yeah, then dude. you find out that you're really uh, <laughs> turned on by anxiety and there's jacking off the whole game. Yeah, I just, just get a video of your fucking love this game. Oh my god. I don't know where my keys are. I'm off. never in the control. The stress levels are incredible. <sighs> that was disgusting. Yeah. Sorry about I, that. Uh, I'm sorry. So <laughs> I have this wrestling belt on. <laughs> and I used to be not able to fit in it, but I lost some weight so I can fit in it now. So I've been wearing it everywhere. So now yeah. you feel like a it's, champ. It's so uncomfortable. Yeah, it doesn't. It's because it's like the bo- there's a big bottom area that it's like diving, you know, I love digging into your food. Butt. Big bottom. So speaking of your belt and wrestling, I know from knowing you for a while now that you love wrestling. I do. Hence why you carry a ridiculous belt around all the time. Uh, but. So like, what were like the first wrestle? What was the first wrestling games that kind you got into and stuff like that? Like how SmackDown? I don't know if a SmackDown on your the first one. SmackDown. I played Maybe? the first SmackDown a lot. It was very good. Yeah, it was a good game. You had different matches. Triangle was your finisher. They had like great storylines. Yeah, it was. It was e- the all of the other ones. Their finishers were like so hard to do back in the day. Yeah. Uh, but that SmackDown was, was like, the first one. You just pick like them up when up. they're dizzy, and Zero. then you push your button. Yeah, yeah. and that was it. Yeah, that, that was a great game. Smackdown that was it. with the Rock on that the was cover. All right? yeah. yeah, yeah, right. hell yeah! SmackDown is the Rock, dude. That's yeah. the one. I I actually never played these. These games came out right. I played uh, the WCW games on in, in Nintendo, and that's something I noticed. Is all the WCW games were on Nintendo, and all the WWF games, WWF at the time, were yeah. on PlayStation. They had the, and they also had a Raw's War kind of game yeah. as well. Well, they also all the a lot of the female characters. Like I know Stephanie McMahon when she fell down, she could see her red underwear. So I was re- like eleven years old. I was I like, "Remember this is the best game." In I'm the just world. gonna keep slamming her down. Uh, you no, could wrestle I, the cat, and the cat like she was wearing like a bikini. I remember going through puberty. <laughs> it was amazing. WrestleMania 18 came out on GameCube, mm-hmm. and that was that was those had graphics where I remember that like Trish Stratus is like, "Oh, if you do this one move." Yeah, you can see your panties and stuff like that. And like, dude, it was a good time. Like that was <laughs> was that our entryway? <laughs> that was my entryway for sure. Oh, no. I also feel like magazine. We might cut that out of the go. podcast. I don't really want my parents to know. They, it, how, what's up, Mister and Missus Miles? They will know. Hey. I knew we shouldn't have gave them those wrestling games. Too much violence. We should have had them play. Too much uh, violence. Link. <laughs> play. Yeah, it's Zelda Link. Um, the one thing about this game though that was crazy is I remember. I remember, like, first playing it and being like, oh, this is why people like video games so much. You know what I mean? It was, like, very customizable. This game came out 20 years ago. Jesus Christ. Yeah, March 2000. I also, so the PlayStation 1 I had, my cousin Steve, great guy, cool guy, probably, I don't know, maybe, like, 10 years older than me or something. He, uh, He bought me a PlayStation for my birthday. Whoa. But he bought it illegally from the Philippines. So it wasn't a real PlayStation. It was like so a it was modded? Yeah, it was modded, and yeah. it couldn't play all the games. It couldn't play a lot of regular PlayStation it, games. It might have been region locked, where Maybe. it was only it could only play like PAL games, yeah. where in you uh, North America and Western worlds NTSC. It was in the Philippines. It was crazy. Okay. But anyways, the point being, that was one of the games he gave me, and I really couldn't like buy or play any other games because they didn't work on my PlayStation. That's all I played. And I was like, oh, now I get it. Just like, constantly laying the smack down. Yeah. Well, it's also totally replayable. You could lay yeah. the smack yeah. down. Do you, uh, do you create characters? I loved creating characters in that game. That's like all, That was my favorite thing to do, just create my own wrestlers. And then just give me your own I would moves. spend all the time. They could be technical or yeah. roughneck or speedy. Yeah, 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 speedy. You can yeah. make them like lanky or like big. Yeah, and you can give the ladies bigger boobs. Yeah, I, I gave myself boobs. Puberty was a big time during this yeah. game. Yeah. You can you can do whatever you wanted. I I would you know what I did because the first uh, what did you do? The first SmackDown that came out. My favorite wrestlers at the time was Too Cool. Yeah, Sky Too Hotty and, and the uh, dead Grandmaster guy. Sexy. Yeah, yeah. He's Jerry Lawler's son. Yeah, fun fact. I uh, I was uh, those were my favorite, and they weren't in the first SmackDown. I don't even know if they were in the second one, but they weren't in the first one. So I had to go in and create them. That's why I was jealous of the uh, the Nintendo sixty four guys. Because the WrestleMania game in mm. WrestleMania 64, had so many more characters. They had they had too cool in it, and Rakishi. 
Oh yeah, yeah. There was a, in, in, yeah. Uh, it was WCW versus like NWO or something like that. Yeah, I and that. I remember one of the cool things about it is the creative character wasn't as good as the um, creative character on the PlayStation versions of the, of the game or the PlayStation games. But one thing, like I, I believe, you could just take the previous textures of characters and put them in, so you could take like, yeah, like random alter, masks and yeah. put them in, and random guy's hair and stuff. But one thing I really liked is I played that game so much that. After a while, I got bored. I started. They had the entire like uh, roster of like the Japanese and Fire Luchador, yeah. yeah, and Fire all these wrestling. different guys had crazy animation moves. And I'm like, Dragon, like all these like crazy guys' names Dragon and Run. stuff, like well, Dragon, and then insert the street you lived on here. And those were just the character names. Like what the Jeez. hell? <laughs> it was kind of like one of those things. But no, these were awesome, and, and it actually had me learn. Where I w I remember going and seeing the WWF photos and you know how you see wrestling on tv and then you see the photos and it's like whoa the color is different because it's, it's a flash photography and stuff i remember recognizing some japanese wrestlers from wcw no versus way. WWE. and i was like oh really that was cool. cool because like it's kind of like whenever you see like ncaa or madden and you see like oh here's the college guys NCAA. young guys or Oh, oh, NCAA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. NCAA. Oh, I was thinking of something else. <laughs> NCAA CP. Yeah, I was thinking of that one. I'm like, um, they were, well. Triple A insurance. What the? NCAA CP 2K20. <laughs> oh, I'd play that game. Um, so that's 2000. That's crazy. 20 years ago. So you played the. D from that period later, did you. When did you just jump to the fur back in the wrestling? I game? went from SmackDown Know Your Role in 2000 to like 2K17. Wow, I played nothing like the NWO game. I heard good things yeah. about Warzone. I heard good things about Wars, the Raw game. I heard good things about. Yeah, never, never had the chance because I also never. I don't think I've ever been. I played my friends N sixty four, but I've never touched a GameCube. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've never touched a Sega. Like I just didn't have access to a lot of systems. I I, I think like replayability. It wasn't just about the fighting, but some of the games you could create your own belt. Yeah. You could design your own belt. And it was I just mean, fun to see, like, intros. Dude, you could, like, okay, so I got, just just in preparation for this conversation, I bought 2K19. I looked at the Steam reviews, 2K17, 18, 19, 20. 19 is the best. 20 is such a, like, it's 60 bucks. And I'm like, no, yeah. I would, oh, thank God I read reviews for that. So 2K19, <laughs> even though it still has a lot of problems and it's still considered a mixed bag, when I play it, like when I was creating, uh, I was creating a character and I was trying to put in the m music, like it created this huge video editing thing where there's like ten different controls where I could adjust the pyro, the you could adjust the, the lighting, the light you adjust the like the and I'm like signage. I I, I remember I w I sent um Danny a photo of when I was working Forest. on us. Um yeah, and uh, I I like just I took a photo of what I was working on and I sent it to him and he's like, oh that's pretty cool. And then I realized. Holy shit! I've been doing this for an hour and a half, yeah. <laughs> and I haven't played a single match. And you just get sucked in. Yeah, you know? yeah, that was my favorite part of the whole experience. Like in Madden, like I, I don't know if you guys ever played Madden, but when I, I used to play a lot more when I was younger. I would spend hours designing jerseys, the exact color stripe and stuff. Some games really could allow you to spend a lot of time changing every single color of things Jesus. ever the material of everything and then this one of the fun th you can when you make the mat you make a mask you can pick a mask shape and change every single color change the material sparkly glittery flat leather i mean it's like okay, i'm blown cool. away by some of these like fan creations that they put on like youtube and stuff yeah. where i'm like oh they don't have these wrestlers but they'll just like totally mod out like someone you're like wow yeah. like you made them yeah yeah like if i want to play with chris benoit i want to play with chris benoit. well, <laughs> well, <laughs> the, well <laughs> he existed you can't deny that he was champion yeah well he he his kid existed too and so did his wife <laughs> jesus yeah Christ. it's over there's a conspiracy that he didn't do it because he his wife was married to another wrestler and so, wait, did some, wait, is there a conspiracy that there's it's a conspiracy like part theory of the story? that this other wrestler like killed the family? It's really interesting. It's a fun. It's an interesting viewpoint. I bet the people that spew that are some of the weirdest looking motherfuckers you've ever seen. <laughs> the Crispin Wall stuff attracts some very interesting people. Also, I think his nephew, maybe his other son, he's related to a guy. There's David Benoit. Maybe it's his son, but he might wrestle as Crispin Wall Jr. If he's training. Which I think is like very interesting. Like you want to bring that into fold? Whoa, yeah, that's, that's not crazy. really the something. legacy. 
<laughs> Eric, um, do you have any any big shows coming up you want to plug on this podcast? I'm not sure if it's going to be too recent when we post this, but no, it's all good. Um, I do. Uh, you can always catch me on BuzzFeed. I always do a bunch of stuff for BuzzFeed. The big thing that I would love to plug is um, I'm in a movie right now. It's called VHES. Uh, Susan Sarandon's in it. Tim Robbins is in it. Uh, uh, Thomas Lennon's in it. I had a scene with Thomas Lennon. It got cut, but it's okay because I'm still in the other scene. But um, we were playing nationwide at the Alamo Draft House. Uh, we've sold out a bunch of dates. We're still going for a few more weeks, hopefully a few more months. So uh, if you want to catch VHES, be sure to check that out. You can get tickets at VHS.fun. You can also catch me uh, at Three Sweet Productions. Uh, Logan's done some stuff. Danny, have you done any Sunday morning sessions? I think you did a Sunday morning session. Yeah, yeah, sessions. yeah. I was there. I've been there. Yeah, you're a forgettable guy. But you uh, <laughs> definitely can check that out. We uh, interview comics. I have a show about tattoos. Uh, talk a lot about wrestling on it. It's great. And then, um, of course, if you're in the L.A. area, stop by uh, Brothers Bar and Grill any Wednesday at Wednesday. Uh, any Wednesday at Wednesday at Wednesday.com at Wednesday.fun.com <laughs> at 8 p.m. You'll probably see this guy there. You'll probably see this guy there. You'll probably see this guy there. Uh, I'm very happy to have uh, done this with you, and I love you all very much. Love you. Thank you for yeah. listening. Catch me on Instagram at Eric Escobar. We should have him do this every every week. Like when we're done with a guest, hey Eric, and Eric comes in and goes, hey friends, and then I'll just do. Ev- <laughs> can I be like your plug right? guy? I'll that be would your plug be guy. Yeah, like like yeah. he comes like in on the with Tonight the belt. Show. There's the one guy that comes in at the very end. And that's me. I'll get a little podium. Goes, hey everybody, yeah. what you know? It's like yeah, mm-hmm. dude. That's. Thank you for watching, guys. Josh Rock <laughs> was an amazing guest. You can catch him on Ba 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 Ba. He's great. He's wonderful. Yeah, he loves Ba Ba Ba. He's a wonder by credit, and uh, I like Josh. I'm happy to know him. Also, uh, uh, Logan. Do yes. you have a Universal Studios pass? I don't have a Universal Studios pass. Do you have pass. interest in getting one? I would maybe not getting a pass, but maybe going once or twice or something. If you pay an extra ten bucks, you like get the pass. Yeah. <laughs> well, really? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like one of those chance. deals where yeah. I think it's like that's I think like, not ten, but it's like a hundred for a ticket. That doesn't seem sustainable in that like if everyone that buys yeah. one just gets the pass. I mean the beer's expensive, so Yeah, the beer is expensive. Butter beer is expensive. Bye. Anyway, there you go. <laughs>